Would you bow your heads for prayer? Almighty God, the source of all life, may our eyes and our hearts this day give thanks for this remarkable life. May our eyes and our hearts turn to you as did the heart of this great man. In Christ's name I pray, amen. A few days before Barbara Bush's death, I was called to the Bush home and the president asked me to pray with her. I went and knocked on her door and Barbara answered, hello Russ, I'm not checking out yet. <clears throat> we talked for a bit. I asked permission to anoint her head with oil and pray with her. And we did, we prayed. I left and then she called me to come back in. Bar, are you okay? I said. She said, yes. Just tell him I adore him. Today we are gathered to celebrate the life of a man that we all adored. At the beginning of a journey that began, June 12, 1924, George Herbert Walker Bush was born into the cradle of a loving family that held fast to the values of friendship and family and faith, of integrity, honesty, and loyalty, of character, courage, and service. Now at the end of that journey, that cradle that sustained him throughout his 94 years of life has released him into the loving arms of his heavenly Father. The end depends on the beginning, and this is a good ending, because from the very beginning, George Bush was committed to a life not for himself, but for others. And so we gather today charged with three tasks, saying goodbye, giving our thanks, and lifting up our lives to hope. Bidding farewell is the hardest of these tasks because we must acknowledge that the world is, is not the same without this great man. The tectonic plates of our world have shifted. In today's world, we sometimes recoil at the complex emotions instead of shedding tears of grief that honor our loved ones. Tears honor those we love. George Bush was never afraid to shed tears, and so today I bid you to follow his example. We also gather to give thanks for the actions of this incredible public servant who improved the lives of so many around the world, across the nation, and in our great state of Texas and our beloved city of Houston. Each of us gathered here today join untold millions around the globe to mourn the death of one of history's greatest leaders. But we have lost more than a leader. He, like his wife of over 70 years, Barbara, had that unique ability to make you feel like he was your best friend and, and you were his. And he pulled it off with charm and humility and humor with few, if any, rivals. So however you do it today, whether through quiet meditation or tearful remembrance or jubilant story, give thanks that his life brushed up against yours. Goodbye. Thank you. But there is one more thing we come to do, and that is to lift up our lives to hope. What do I mean by that? Well, President Bush was a man of faith a faith that sustained him in this life and now has brought him new life. The president and Barbara Bush were devoted and active members of this church, St. Martin's, for over 50 years. In a talk the president gave here in 1982, he spoke of his love for St. Martin's, his memories of teaching Sunday school and serving coffee and worshiping here. This is what he said, I remember sitting in the back and how my pew wiggled and shook as our four boys and sometimes Dora got the giggles. And then he added, I don't wanna hold it over the rest of you, 
But how many of you can say of the Christmas pageant, my grandson was a shepherd in 1980 and his sister an angel, both in the same year? As he was giving this talk, Barbara spoke up and said, did it ever occur to you that they both made it because you had just been elected vice president? <laughs> but there was a deeper purpose in his faith in an open letter to clergy across the United States just before his inauguration, the president-elect Bush wrote, worship is basic to my own life. Our family has endeavored to uphold our faith by participation in the life of our church. In an address two years into his presidency, he recalled President Lincoln's response at the height of the Civil War when asked, if he thought the Lord was on Lincoln's side. And Lincoln responded, my concern is not whether God is on our side, but whether we are on God's side. Make no mistake about it, George Bush was on God's side. It's why together we carefully chose the lessons for this service, which I hope you'll take home and read and reflect upon there, are lessons that bespeak of the love of God and the comfort of God and the hope of life eternal given to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Martin of Tours is the patron saint of this parish. He's best known for tearing his cloak in two to cover a barely dressed beggar. He did so impulsively, instinctively, knowing that it was the right thing to do. Only later was it revealed to him in a dream that his selfless act had clothed Christ Himself. Now, those of us fortunate to worship with George and Barbara Bush here witnessed a similar selflessness. As we worshiped together, they never made a show or a fuss of arriving, worshiping, or leaving. They loved to spend time with the members here. They had a favorite spot right over there, but if they arrived and someone had beat them to it, they never created a problem. In fact, particularly crowded days, Christmas and Easter, they often relinquish their seats to mother overloaded with children or a son coming with his elderly parents. One particularly cold day, as the president came in the back, he was met by an usher who didn't have on an overcoat. Aren't you cold, the president asked. And the young man said, oh, I'm fine. But before he could finish his sentence, the president whipped off his own coat and placed it around the gent's shoulders. And he walked into worship with a smile and without another word. George Bush loved our Lord and knew our Lord loved him. And it was that connection that birthed in the 41st president a desire to serve. A few years ago, the president and I discussed his deteriorating health. At the time, he didn't know how that struggle would end and he put a question to me about as simply as anybody could. He said, well, what do you think heaven's like? It was a confident statement, one that bespoke of a resolute faith. He didn't want to know if there was a heaven or whether he would be there when the end came. He said he just wanted to know what it was like. He was ready for heaven and heaven was ready for him. My guess is that on December 30th, when the president arrived in heaven, that Barbara was standing there with her hands on her hips, saying, what took you so long? But then a big old Texas-sized hug from his wife and daughter with the words, we adore you. His very first act, after being sworn into office as the 41st president, was to lead our nation in prayer. And as the end depends on the beginning, and as we say our goodbyes, I want to invite you to pray in honor and thanksgiving in celebration of this man that we know and love this man we adore. Would you bow your heads? May his prayer, this was his prayer 
on the day of his inauguration, his first act as president. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads and thank you for your love. Accept our thanks for the peace that yields this day and the shared faith that makes its continuance likely. Make us strong to do your work, willing to heed and hear your will, and write on our hearts these words, use power to help people. For we are given power not to advance our own purposes, nor to make a great show in the world, nor a name. There is but one just use of power, and it is to serve people. Help us remember, Lord. Amen.